You don't have to be an accomplished climber or a seasoned seafarer for knots to be helpful in your day-to-day -day life. On the contrary, as you'll always be tying things down, and the de facto granny loop is a knot that just won't do. With this in mind, we've roped together a handy guide of 10 common knots that everyone should know. From the notorious square knot to the elusive trucker's hitch, we lay it all out so that you can get to tying. While the square knot is one of the easiest knots to learn, it's also one that many people tend to tie incorrectly. Be sure to pay attention to how you're crossing your ropes. With just one wrong move, you'll wind up with a granny knot. For even though they may look similar in execution, the two knots are actually very different in utility. The square knot is used primarily for joining two ropes or cords. The granny knot, on the other hand, easily comes undone. With that being said, let's begin. Grab two ends of rope, one in each hand. They can be the ends of the same rope or the ends of two different pieces of rope. Bring the end in your left hand over and under the end in your right hand. You should finish with each end in the opposite hand. Cross the ends again, this time placing the strand that's now in your right hand over the strand that's now in your left hand. To tighten, pull the running ends away from each other at the same time. You've now completed a square knot. If you've tied your knot correctly, each end will be running parallel to its respective length of rope. Similar to a square knot, the sheet bend is best used for tying two lengths of rope together, especially if they happen to be of different sizes or materials. As such, sheet bends are also known as weaver's knots when used with yarn or twine. It's worth noting that for a sheet bend to have any strength, the two free ends should line up on the same side of the knot. If they happen to be on opposite sides, a left-handed sheet bend, the knot will slip under load and release completely. Let's get to it. Begin by forming a loop using the end of one rope. Bring the free end of your second joining rope under and through the opening of the loop. Wrap the joining rope around both ends of the looped rope. Pull the joining rope under itself Complete the knot by pulling all four ends to tighten. You have now completed a sheet bend. You can perform a double sheet bend by wrapping the joining rope around the looped rope for a second time. Bow lines are easily amongst the most useful types of knots you can know. They've been used for centuries on account of their reliability, stability, and strength. Commonly used for forming a fixed loop at the end of a rope, they're highly secure, yet still plenty easy to untie. Accordingly, you should never use a bowline in critical life or death applications. Sure, it bites far better than other types of knots, but it only maintains about 60% of the rope's overall strength. With this in mind, it's time to get tying. Initiate the knot by draping the rope across one hand with several inches of the free end hanging down. Form a small loop with the rope in your hand. Bring the free end back up. Pass it through the underside of the loop. Continue around the backside of the standing rope segment. Pull the free end down through the same loop that you just came through. Tighten by holding the standing line and pulling on the free end. You have just completed a bow line. In scenarios where you might need to tie an adjustable sliding knot on your rope, the Boy Scouts of America recommends the taut line hitch. Perfect for securing guy lines and other supportive rope segments. It's a free-moving knot that bites hard and jams when placed under load. As such, the taut line hitch is an incredibly versatile tie that's commonly used on everything from aircraft to adjustable moorings. In fact, it's such a trusted knot that astronauts even used it when repairing the Hubble Space Telescope aboard the STS-82 mission. Let's begin. Take a generous length of rope and bring it around a post or similar object. Pass the free end under the standing segment and between the two sections of rope. Repeat once more, working toward the post. Coil the free end under and around the standing line, above the coil you have just made. Tighten the knot by pulling on the free end. You have now completed a taut line hitch. The round turn and two half hitches is a knot that's used to attach the end of a rope to a fixed object. Made up of two parts, 
The turn bears the brunt of the load, while the hitches provide additional support. In conjunction, they allow the knot to retain as much as 75% of the line's overall strength. One of the primary benefits of the round turn and two half hitches is that it can be tied and untied when under load. Moreover, it's highly unlikely that the knot will ever slip, and you never have to worry about it jamming. Now onto the knot. Begin by bringing one end of the rope under and around your object of choice, twice. Pass that same working end underneath the standing end. Make a turn and pull the rope through the loop you just made. Cinch it tight. Repeat steps three and four. You've now completed a round turn and two half hitches. If you'd like to further secure your knot, you can add additional half hitches. Up until now, our knots have been primarily intended for attachment, be it to another length of rope or a different object altogether. The figure eight knot, however, is a type of stopper that's used to prevent ropes from slipping out of retaining devices. Accordingly, it's a knot that's ubiquitous throughout climbing and sailing. Because the figure eight knot maintains about 80% of the rope's overall strength, it's a knot that forms the basis of many other advanced ties, as it makes for an excellent foundation. Assuming you want even more security from your stopper, you can add a second pass to your figure eight and make it a double. Without further ado, let's get started. Make a loop with one end of the rope, bringing it under the standing segment. Complete the eight by bringing the working end over and under the standing end. Pull the working end through the loop you have created in step one. You have just finished your first figure eight knot. While the clove hitch is by far one of the most useful knots you can learn, it's one that should only be tied in certain applications. That's because for all of its ease and utility, the clove hitch can easily slip and or jam depending on the gauge of the rope and the shape of the object. As such, it's best to use the clove hitch in concert with half hitches and other more secure ties. It's worth noting though, that adding too many secondary knots will often cause a clove hitch to bind. Thus, you should only use the knot in non-critical applications, such as hanging a hammock or fixing a fender to a boat. Let's get started. Begin by wrapping the free end of a rope around a post or a similar object. Cross the rope over itself and around the post once more. Bring the working end under your last wrap. Pull to tighten, reducing excess looseness by cinching it up and down. You have now tied a clove hitch. As you'd expect, the primary function of the anchor bend is to attach lengths of rope to anchors and other ringed tie-offs. That being said, Boating isn't the knot's only application. The anchor bend is also used by climbers when securing carabiners and by arborists when scaling trees. Interestingly, the anchor bend is very similar to a round turn and two half hitches, though one of the hitches is passed under the turn instead of over it. And the thing is, the knot is technically not a bend. It's actually a hitch. In any case, grab some rope and get ready. Wrap your rope around your object two times, starting from the backside. Pull the working end over the standing segment. Wrap it around and pass through the loop made in step one. Pull tightly. Bring the working end over and back through the loop you've just made. Hold and pull tight. You have now completed an anchor bend. Compact, strong, and secure under strain, the fisherman's knot is best used for quickly tying two ropes of equal diameter together. Though the knot is rife with benefits, it can be cut very close and it's easily performed, even with wet hands. It weakens the rope with which it is tied. Should you be after an even more secure variation, you can switch up the knot with double overhand ties and altered overlappings. For that matter, you can even wrap the working end three or four times to ensure the utmost strength. Before we get ahead of ourselves though, here's how to tie the fisherman's knot. Grab two lengths of rope. Tie a loose overhand knot with rope A around rope B. 
do not tighten. Tie a second loose overhand knot with rope B around rope A. Cinch down both knots. Pull the standing ends of each rope to seat the two knots together. Your fisherman's knot is now complete. Last, but certainly not least, we have the trucker's hitch. Along with cinching down heavy loads and tying objects to the tops of cars, it can also be used for securing long spans of rope, such as clotheslines or tarp guy lines. Because of the hitch's compound structure, it creates a mechanical advantage of nearly three to one. We should also point out that there are tons of variations of the trucker's hitch. Between the initial loop and the finishing hitches, you can play with the knot to suit your application. Let's get to it. Find a point on the rope and pinch together to form a loop. Grab a segment of the working end and pull it through the backside of the loop. Secure by holding the knot and tugging on the standing end. Take the free end of the rope and perform a half turn around a fixed object. Bring it up and through the loop created in step two. Complete the knot by tying two half hitches below the loop, working from the front side of the standing end. Be sure to cinch each hitch down. If you wish to provide further support, add additional half hitches. You have now finished your first trucker's hitch.